morning we have been discussing the growth of perturbations in an expanding homogeneous and isotropic universe and in the last class we had derived the linear equations governing the growth of perturbations in such a background model and <coughs> then I had what we had done was we had decomposed the density contrast into a function of time product of a function of time and a function of and a position dependent function and this mode the time dependent mode growing mode or decaying mode this satisfies the equation This rho is the background density, I am not going to explicitly show it. So, 4 pi g rho into d. This, so, this function of time d of t, which tells us how the perturbation evolves in time, this is governed by this equation shown over here. And in the last class, I had solved this equation explicitly for the Einstein d sitter cosmological model where omega matter is 1 and I had shown you that this function d of t has two possible solutions. One solution is where it is proportional to the scale factor. So, it as the universe expands the perturbations grow in exactly the same way. This was the growing mode of density perturbations and we had a decaying mode of density perturbations where it where the perturbations the amplitude of the perturbation falls off as the universe expands as 1 by t. And if you are interested in structure formation, it is the growing mode that is of importance. Now, the next thing that we started discussing was how to calculate the growing mode and decaying mode for an arbitrary cosmological model. And the background model comes in over here through the Hubble parameter h, which is which differs from model to model. So, what I had told you in the last class was that suppose that to the way to generate solutions to this equation is to consider the evolution of the background which is governed by a double dot is equal to minus four third pi g rho a that is the evolution of the background and what I had told you was that if I take two different, so this is a second order differential equation. When I integrate it twice to get a as a function of t, there will be some constants of integration. By varying these constants of integration, I can get different solutions. So, this equation has in principle infinite number of solutions. So, if I take two slightly different solutions, so one solution is a of t and this is one solution of this equation. The other solution, let us call it slightly different solution a of t into 1 plus delta t. These are two slightly different solutions. If I take two such slightly different solutions of this equation, then the difference is actually a solution of this equation. That is what I had shown in the last class. Okay. So, the difference delta t, the fractional difference delta t, which is delta a by a, this is a solution to this equation. So, this is equal to d with some, right, this is a solution of this equation. So, we can generate solutions of this equation by taking a background, a, cost, a solution and then varying it slightly and then looking at the difference. Okay, that is the basic idea. So, let us write down the solution to this equation. So, we have seen that when I integrate this equation once, what we get is a dot 
by a square is equal to h naught square and we had the way we had parameterized it we had omega matter not a to the power minus 3 plus omega curvature not a to the power minus 2 plus omega lambda not. <coughs> so, the analysis this analysis which I had done is also valid if I have a cosmological constant in addition to the usual matter it is also valid if I have a cosmological constant I have not considered the cosmological constant here, but it is also valid you can check easily if I have a cosmological constant it is not valid if I have some other kinds of matter, but it is valid if I have a cosmological constant. Okay. And so, this is the solution that I get when I integrate this once that I multiplied by a dot and integrate it once. In this integration we have introduced one constant of integration and recollect what the const which of these is the constant of integration it is this curvature. The curvature the constant of integration that we get when I integrate that equation once has been recast as a some kind of a hypothetical matter the omega curvature. Okay, so this is essentially a constant of integration. Now, to get a solution I have to integrate this once more. So, let me integrate this once more. So, what I have here I will call this whole thing x. Let me call this x of a. Okay. So, what I this is nowadays referred to as e of a, but you can call it x of a also following people's notation. So, if I integrate this equation what I will get is a d a. So, I have the integral d a d a prime here by d a d t. So, I am taking that this is equal to t plus a constant right I have d a d t I have taken square root of this whole thing. So, I will have 1 by h naught then here I will have a prime to the power half x to the power half as a function of a prime right. So, d a prime this is d a d t. So, the d t I take on to the right hand side and I do the integration. So, I will get t plus a constant. <coughs> what I will have left is d a by a. So, d a prime by a prime this x this whole thing is x. So, I will take it and bring it here 0 to a. If I integrate this I will get a as a function of t. Okay, that is my solution to this equation and the constant of integration c tells us what the value of a is at t equal to 0. Okay, it essentially sets the value of a at t equal to 0, it sets the origin of time and we have till now chosen this so that the big bang occurs when t is equal to 0, but it is not necessary to do so. So, this is the solution to this equation that it can be written in form of this integral d a prime <coughs> ah there will not be a a to the power half here it will just be a prime right I am taking square root of this. So, I will have <coughs> d a d t by a and this factor will get square root x to the power half h naught t plus c right. Please check this I hope it is correct right it is correct. So, this gives me a as a function of t a solution. Now, this solution involves two constants of integration one of them is this constant c the other one is this constant omega curvature. So, I can generate 
<coughs> other solutions, different solutions by just varying the value of the constant c and by varying the value of omega curvature. Okay. So, let us do this exercise. Let me first. <coughs> So, I can get delta of t, I will get some d of t is equal to 1 by a del a del c. Right? If I vary c, I will get a different solution. So, I want the difference in a that is going to be del a del c, right. So, the d of t is delta a by a, delta a is essentially del a del c into delta c, delta c could be arbitrary divided by a. So, I get some mode of one of the solutions by considering 1 by a del a del c. Okay. So, let us calculate this. So, this is going to be equal to 1 by a. This derivative is at a constant time. I am differentiating the function a of t. So, it is at a constant time. So, when I differentiate this, what do I get with respect to c? What do I get? I get del a del c into this whole thing evaluated at x equal to at a, a prime equal to a. Right? So, what I get is <coughs> this will the right hand side is 1. So, what I will get if I differentiate this let me well first differentiate this with respect to c. Okay. If I differentiate this with respect let me do that here. I am differentiating this equation with respect to c. So, if I do that I will get one term I will get 1 by h naught the constants are of no significance then I will have del A del C. I am differentiating A with respect to uh, this whole thing with respect to C. So, del A del C is what I will get here and then I will have this integrand evaluated at A prime equal to A. Okay, so, that will be 1 by A x a this is equal to 1 that is what I get or this implies that del a del c is equal to h naught is a constant it does not matter. So, I am going to drop it or if you I am going to drop it. So, then I, this is equal to a into x a. So, d of t <coughs> is 1 by a, a into x a, which is essentially equal to x a. <coughs> now, x to the power half, sorry, this is x to the power half. So, this is x to the power half, okay, x to the power half a. So, one solution, one of the modes of the evolution of perturbation we see is the, this thing over here. It is omega matter naught A minus 3 plus omega curvature naught A minus 2 plus omega lambda naught to the power half. Okay, this is one of the modes, one of the solutions. There are two possible solutions. Let me work out the next solution. The next solution is d is equal to 1 by a del a del omega curvature naught. Okay, there are two things that I can vary. So, I am varying the next the other possibility is omega curvature naught.
So again, I am going to do it here. Let me do the derivation over here and then put back this. <coughs> so if I differentiate this with omega curvature naught, I will have the right hand side is 0, does not involve omega curvature naught. The left hand side, I will have one term when I differentiate A with respect to omega curvature naught and another term when I differentiate x because x itself has omega curvature naught. Okay, so I will have two terms. So let me first write down the first term when I different this 1 by h naught I can forget about. So let me write down the first term when I differentiate this with respect to omega curvature naught. So that will give me del A del omega curvature naught. I have differentiated the numerator, so I will have the integrand at x equal to at a, a prime equal to a. So what I will have is into 1 by a x to the power half a. So that is what I get when I differentiate this. The other possibilities I can differentiate x itself. Okay, let me do that. So this is e this plus <coughs> if I differentiate x, I will have 0 to a, the integral remains as it is d a prime So I am differentiating x to the power half with respect to omega curvature naught. If I differentiate x to the power half, x to the power, essentially x to the power minus half, so I will get minus half and then here I will get x to the power 3 by 2 of a prime. So I am differentiating this, so I will get minus half x to the power 3 by 2 in the denominator and then if I differentiate this x with respect to this, I will get a to the power minus 2. So I will have this to the power 3, right, minus 2 will coming from when I, the term that I get when I differentiate this, one already existed, okay. So this is equal to 0. Now factors of half we are not interested in because a, a number multiplying d is also a solution. So what this we can what this tells us is that del A del omega curvature naught is equal to A x to the power half a, a, this is equal to this and then we have the integral 0 to a d a prime a prime cube x to the power 3 by 2 a prime. And the other mode d is equal to 1 by a into this, so this a is gone, it is not there, okay. So we have the two modes. So we have worked out the two solutions explicitly. Let us now spend a little time understanding what we have done what we have obtained. Let us first go back and check that what these give us for the einstein Sitter cosmological model, which we have already solved explicitly. For the einstein Sitter cosmological model in the last class, we have already worked out the solution. Okay. So recollect what the einstein Sitter cosmological model is. In the einstein Sitter, so we are going to first consider omega matter equal to 1, that is all we have. 
and in this model we know that A, okay, we shall first work out everything in terms of A and then put what A is, okay. So let us first work out the solution that we get by varying with respect to C, which is the origin of time. This tells us that d is essentially x to the power half. So, if it is omega matter, only omega matter, then these two terms do not contribute. What we have is omega matter which is 1 into a to the power minus 3 by 2, minus 3 and we have a factor of half here. So, finally, what we have is d is equal to a to the power minus 3 by 2, right. That is the first one when we vary with respect to the constant of integration, the, the which is the origin of time. And here we know in this model that a is equal to t to the power 2 thirds with some constant which we are not interested in right now. So, if I put this here a to the power 2 thirds, then what we find is this is equal to 1 by t, okay. So, this is the decaying mode. So, when I vary with respect to C, the origin of time, the difference between the two cosmological models gives us the decaying mode. This is the decaying mode of density perturbations. Okay. Let us now consider the next solution. The next solution was d is equal to x to the power half. So, x to the power half means x is this whole thing over here, omega matter is 1, all of this is gone. So, x to the power half means a to the power minus 3 by 2 again. So, we have a to the power <coughs> minus 3 by 2 outside the integral and then we have the integral 0 to a d a prime a prime cube. And here we have x to the power 3 by 2. So, x to the power 3 by 2 is omega matter that is 1 a to the power minus 9 by 2, okay. So, this minus 9 by 2. So, this is 6 minus 9 which is minus this whole thing is equal to minus 3 by 2. So, d a prime a to the power minus 3 by 2 this is basically a to the power 3 by 2. So, if I do this integration I will get a to the power 5 by 2, here I have a to the power minus 3 by 2. So, this is going to give me finally a with some constants which we are not interested in, right, just by power counting. Here we have minus 3 by 2, here we have minus 3 by 2, these will cancel out. I have a left, okay. When I integrate, these are all powers. So, they will just be factors outside which I am not interested in. So, what we find that this is the growing mode, okay. These solutions are exactly what we had worked out. So, this method gives correct answers and 
we also see that when we vary with respect to <coughs> the constant that uh, changes the origin of time, I generate the, the decaying mode of density perturbations. If I vary with respect to the other constant of integration which we here associate with the curvature, then I get the growing mode of density perturbations. Okay. So, <coughs> we have worked out, we are interested in the two different solutions and we are mainly interested in the growing mode. So, for any, any arbitrary cosmological model, you can work out the growing mode of density perturbations by just integrating this. By arbitrary, we mean where there is matter, curvature and cosmological constant, which is <coughs> believed to be a valid scenario at redshifts below redsh uh, 10,000. Right. So, there at redshifts below 10,000, provided your model is parameterized by just these three things, then we have the growing mode given by this. Let us now investigate these both of these modes in for other. So, in general this is a this integration has to be done in general. If you want say you want to the, suppose you want to find out how perturbations grow in a cosmological model where omega matter is 0.3 omega lambda is 0.7. In that situation what you have to do is you have to just put in those omega matter omega lambda in the expression for x and do the integration and you will get this growing mode. It will tell you how the perturbations will grow. Okay. Now this has to be done numerically in general. So you have to just put this in a computer, do the integration by some Simpson rule or some numerical technique and it will give you d as a function of a. Okay. Now, to get an idea of what happens, we shall consider the three extreme possibilities. So, let us next consider the extreme other possibility omega curvature naught is 1. So, there is only curvature, there is no matter, there is no cosmological constant. That this is free expansion. Let us see what happens to perturbations in this model. So, in this cosmological model, let us work out the two modes again. So, the first mode, this is the decaying mode, we know that d minus, so d minus we have seen is x to the power of half and here x has only got the curvature term. So, we have only curvature, so it is omega curvature which is 1 a to the power minus 2 this whole thing to the power of half. So, it is essentially that what it tells us is that this goes as a to the power minus 1 or it is t to the power minus 1. Okay, a scales as t. So, here we know that a is equal to t, it scales as t. So, it is t inverse with some constants which I am not writing. Okay, that is the decaying mode. What about the growing mode? The growing mode d plus. So, here we have to, so let us put this in. This is a to the power minus 1, we just worked it out. Then I have the integral 0 to a d a prime. a prime cube and we have x to the power of 3 by 2. So, x to the power half we know is a to the power minus 1. So, when I cube it I will get minus 3. So, what we get when I do this integral is that this integration gives me a and I have factor of a to the power minus 1 outside. So, this is a constant. So, the growing mode, there is no growing mode. So, there are only there are two modes over here. One mode, the perturbations decay away as 1 by t. In the other mode, the perturbations remain frozen. They do not evolve. Okay. So, there is no growing mode. Perturbations do not grow. And this is quite easy to understand. Omega curvature model, there is no matter. Matter is just tracers. So, if I put a perturbation, 
there are two possibilities it can just remain frozen with the expansion or because of the expansion it can just dilute away okay it depends on how the peculiar velocities are oriented there are two possibilities but the bottom line of this whole thing is that perturbations do not grow in a curvature dominated cosmological model okay let us also look at a lambda dominated cosmological model so here we have omega lambda equal to 1 the others are much smaller or omega lambda is much larger than the others okay it's valid there or there but i'm just setting it equal to 1 and dropping the others so the first mode d is x to the power half and x here is a constant so this is also a constant d minus that is a constant and the second mode d plus is equal to x to the power half x is a constant over here right x has only omega cosmological constant so it's a constant so this x to the power half is a constant so the factor outside is a constant and then i have the integration 0 to a da prime which is some constant <coughs> it obviously b cannot the integration will not be all the way to 0 because this model does not really collapse to 0 so there will be some so let us some constant so it will be some constant term and then I will have minus 1 by a square so this will be some k minus 1 by a square right 1 by a cube if I integrate once I will get 1 by a square and there will be a minus sign So here again there are no growing modes, perturbations do not grow, perturbations either remain fixed or they tend to a very fixed value or they, they tend to they disappear basically, they, they are washed away. Okay. So what we see from this analysis is that perturbations only grow, grow only when the universe is matter dominated. So let me write it down. Perturbations grow only when the universe is matter dominated and perturbations do not grow when the universe is dominated either by a curvature or the cosmological constant. So in the last class I had shown you a graph, I had drawn a graph then sketchily and in this graph on one side we had d the growing mode and on the other axis so on one axis we had d the growing mode and on the other axis we had a and this graph was on a log log scale it is a log this was a log scale graph okay so what we saw was this is 10 to the power 4 let us say 10 to the power minus 4, 10 to the power minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0. This is 10 to the power, okay, 10 to the power 0. And similarly, these are appropriate numbers on the d axis. So, what we had seen was that if the omega matter dominates, if, if it is a matter dominated universe, perturbations will grow like this omega matter this is omega matter equal to 1 
now the question is what happens if omega matter is 0.3 and omega lambda these are all the present value is 0.7. So it is quite clear from this that there will be a transition between these two, right, when this contribution becomes equal to this contribution. So what, when does the transition occur? The transition occurs when omega matter naught A minus 3 is equal to omega lambda matter, right, these two terms become equal their contribution to the dynamics of the universe become equal. So the matter makes a contribution A minus 3 omega matter naught, the cosmological constant makes a constant term. So the value of A where this occurs is 0.3 by 0.7 to the power of one third, A let us say A transition okay. and this 3 by 7 to the power one third. This value is somewhere between 10 to the power minus 1 and 10 to the power 0. So it is at a redshift of order unity, okay, somewhere over here. So before this, the universe was matter dominated. All the way from 10 to the power 4 till this value, the universe was matter dominated. So all the way till roughly somewhere over here the perturbations will grow exactly like this even if we have omega matter 0.3 omega lambda 0.7. Once the universe becomes cosmological constant dominated the per growth of perturbation slows down and it is going to become somewhere here you will have it will become like this and at present the growth of perturbations is smaller in these models than if the universe had only matter. Okay. And one can work out, work this out explicitly. <coughs> okay. Now the next thing, just a matter of convention, I should just mention. I should mention it. It is that. What we see at present is a combination of delta x at this, what we see is this. Now it is convenient to choose D, the growing mode, D is now the growing mode, okay, we are only dealing with the growing mode, not the other mode, D t at present to be equal to 1, normalization. So that this is equal to delta x. So at any epoch in the past, the growing the perturbations were smaller. So I have to just multiply what we see at present with a number less than one to get the perturbations in the past. Okay, I hope this is clear. That's the convention which we normally use. So the perturb this, so this factor d of t at present is one. So at present this is equal to this. If I want the del the density fluctuations the same density fluctuation at some earlier time, this is going to be d of t delta x and d of t is a number which is less than 1. So in the past, the perturbations were smaller than what we see now. Okay. <coughs> now what we have discussed until now is the growth of linear perturbations density perturbations. But there are other things, there is the peculiar velocity and one can actually observe the peculiar velocity also and one can observe effects of the peculiar velocity. What do we mean by peculiar velocity? These are deviations from the Hubble flow. So if I see a galaxy, if I know its distance by some independent means, I can predict what its velocity should be, what its radial component of the velocity should be. Now I can measure the radial component of the velocity from the redshift and if these are not same then the difference I can attribute to peculiar velocity. 
So we know that peculiar velocities exist. You have I have shown you pictures of galaxy redshift surveys where there is ample evidence for peculiar velocity. There are all kinds of structures that you see which really do not exist. They are you see them because you do not know the distance. You, what you do is you measure the redshift and use that as the distance. The redshift actually is the cosmological expansion plus the peculiar velocity. It has two motions. Okay. So, so the, what we are going to look at next is the peculiar velocities. How do deviations from the Hubble velocity pattern, how do these evolve? To understand this, so let us go back to the equations, original equations. So, we had the equations that we have. These were the two equations which these are the two equations which are important here. So, the evolution of the peculiar velocity is given by the Euler equation. <coughs> and as we were interested in the density fluctuations, we had taken the divergence of this equation and combined it with this and the Poisson equation. But the fact is that in general the peculiar velocity is a vector is a velocity is a vector field and any vector field can be decomposed provided it satisfies certain boundary conditions. It can be decomposed as minus the gradient of some potential plus the curl could have chosen a plus sign here also does not make a difference curl of a vector field this I am sure all of us are familiar with. Any vector field V can be decomposed into a gradient and a curl. When I take divergence of V the divergence of this term does not contribute. Okay. So, if I take divergence of V, it is only this term that contributes. Okay. So, if I take the divergence of V, this is equal to minus del square psi and the curl of V curl of curl of this, curl of curl of A. Right. So, essentially this breaks it up into two parts, one which has a divergence, one which has a curl. Okay. The curl of V is what we call the vorticity. To get a pictorial understanding of this, if the velocity field has divergence, it is either going out or coming in to a point, these patterns have divergence. Divergence quantifies the net flow out or in from a point. So, if I take the divergence here, I will get a positive value. If I take the divergence here, I will get a negative value. That we know this from Gauss theorem also. Whereas, the vorticity, it has no divergence like the magnetic field. It quantifies the circular patterns. Okay. This is the curl or the vorticity. Circular pattern. Now, at linear order, it is only the divergence that produces density fluctuations related to density fluctuations. That is obvious, right? If I have this, the density is going down. If I have this, the density is coming up. So, these coupled to density fluctuations, these do not produce any change in the density. 
So, they do not couple to density fluctuations. Okay, let us see that. So, if I want, I want to first study the vorticity, the evolution of the vorticity. So, I will take the curl of this equation. Okay. If I take the curl of this equation, what it tells us is that del by del t of omega that is the vorticity plus a dot by a omega is 0 or this omega vorticity is a into a is a constant. So, what it tells us is that if sometime early in the universe I introduce a circular velocity pattern as the universe expands this pattern, so this vorticity is going to die away as 1 by the scale factor. This is essentially due to the expansion of the universe. Okay. So, if you speculate for example that the rotation, if you look at the galaxies they are rotating. So, inside the galaxy the matter has a vorticity that is obvious, it has a circular pattern. If you think that you could have generated this by some tiny vorticity in the early universe which grows, well that is incorrect because as the universe expands the vorticity is going to get diluted as the scale factor. Okay, so, you have to have some other mechanism by which to generate the vorticity that you see inside the galaxies. They could not have been part of these small perturbations that give rise to the structures. Okay, so, any small vorticity introduced early in the universe is going to get wiped away as 1 by a as the universe expands. <coughs> okay. The other thing is so the vorticity is not important basically what we see from here and we are does not couple to density fluctuations. So, we are essentially going to be interested in only this part of the peculiar velocity and it is this part that is of relevance. <coughs> And if you are interested in only this part, the part that couples to the density fluctuations, the one which has a divergence, then the divergence of V is minus del square psi. Okay, where V is the gradient of minus psi. So we can use this in the equation over here. So what it tells us is that del square psi let me do that. So, what it tells us is that this I am only dealing with the growing mode, okay. the decaying mode we have forgotten about it does not is of not it is not of much consequence for structure formation. So, let us deal with only the growing mode. So, this delta I can write as the growing mode into a function of x. So, this I can write as d dot delta x right this delta is a function i have separated it into a function of time and a function of x where this is the growing mode so d dot this becomes just a time derivative of the growing mode into the spatial part and this is 1 by a and the divergence of V is minus del square psi. So, what it tells us is that del square psi is equal to A d dot by d into the density fluctuation delta x t. Right, I have just multiplied and divided by. So, I have written it in terms of the density fluctuation that you see, not just the spatial part. 
Now we can invert this equation, <coughs> quite simple, this is just the Poisson equation, we know how to solve it, we have done it for charged particles for gravity. So the solution is psi the solution I am going to write away write down straight away this is minus a d dot by d 1 by 4 pi the integral <coughs> delta x prime t d cube x prime by x minus x prime. Right, this is just the Poisson equation just like gravity. If I want to calculate the gravitational potential due to a particular mass distribution, I have to add up the contribution from all of the masses. Okay. There is a factor of 4 pi that appears in the Poisson equation, so I have to put a factor of 1 by 4 pi here. There is a minus sign. Okay. So this is the solution to this equation <coughs> and minus the gradient of this gives me the peculiar velocity. And the gradient is with respect to x. Okay. So the peculiar velocity v at any point x t is equal to minus, minus sign is gone, I will take minus the gradient. So this is plus a d dot by d. 1 by 4 pi a dot d dot by d 1 by 4 pi and then I have the integration and I need to take the gradient of this. So the gradient of this the gradient of 1 by x, we know the gradient of 1 by x is 1 by x square and it is in the radial direction, right? which we can write as the vector x by x cube. So and there will be a minus sign because this is 1 by x. So the gradient of this again the sign becomes minus or I can reverse it over here. So what I have is x prime minus x. by x prime minus x cube, this is 1 by x square delta x prime t d cube x prime. Okay. So this relates the peculiar velocity to the density fluctuation. Further, let me simplify this a little bit and then we will stop. Further, it is convenient to define a function f which is the logarithmic derivative of d. So what do we mean by logarithmic derivative of d? It is, you see this is the time derivative of d divided by d. Now I can write this as d ln d by dt divided by, so this will give me d dot by d divided by d ln a d t which is also equal to d ln d d ln a. <coughs> okay. So if I write this expression in terms of this f, then I have to 
what I already have. So, this d dot by d is equal to logarithmic derivative of a with respect to t is basically the Hubble parameter h a dot by a right. So, d dot by d is equal to h f ok. So, using this I can write the peculiar velocity at a point x at a time t as a h f this a is there d dot by d is h into f by 4 pi x prime minus x by x prime minus x cube delta x prime t d cube x prime. <coughs> okay. Let me stop over here for today and in the next class we, we shall continue discussing this.